I strongly believe that we will have a hyperinflationary depression. But if we do have a deflationary depression, the cure is still the same, gold and silver. In either a inflationary or deflationary case, the unsustainable fiat world stops, and the entire complex debt-based system collapses. There will be no functioning currency, no functioning economy, no international or domestic trade, no earnings to value stocks, no rents to value properties. Then there are the very real and very dangerous social consequences of this collapse, riots, starvation, disease, and war. The entire paper wealth of the world will implode in either case. The only choice they have is how long and how much energy are the criminal elite going to put into sustaining the unsustainable. The only thing that will be left standing in both collapse scenarios is stuff that has real, tangible, intrinsic value. Things that people need to live like food, water, and guns. Commodities will have value, but most will get destroyed since so much of their wealth is determined by credit and trade. Without a functioning economy, what is corn in Iowa worth if there is no market that will buy it? Or worse, how do they plant corn if they cannot buy seed from Monsanto, or get fertilizer, or fuel to harvest and transport these crops? Gold and silver need nothing to show their value. They are worth something simply because they are rare and have uses. I believe a collapsing credit market may actually catapult gold and silver by eliminating major players that have held gold and silver down through paper manipulation schemes. It may also help the gold and silver market as people lose faith in all of their paper assets and rush into the very small precious metals market. For argument's sake, say we do have a grinding deflation and the nominal price of gold and silver does go down. The real purchasing power of that metal can actually go up in value as all other credit debt-based assets collapse. For example, we could get a market that has no credit available or mortgage rates are close to 24% and maybe only available for shorter, more rational terms like 10 years. What do you think the value of your house will be relative to silver? What would the economy and the job market be like if someone could actually even afford that property? What do you think that would do to the thousands of other properties that are going to be flooding the market? What do you think of all that debt that's tied to it? What do you think it is going to do to property taxes as towns become desperate to find money? You could easily see a house that once sold for 300000 sell for only 30000 Silver, on the other hand, might go up because of the rush into real tangible value, but let us just say it does go down from $30 by 70% to $9 an ounce. The ratio to buy that house went from 10,000 ounces of silver to buy that $300,000 house to now 3,333 ounces to buy that $30,000 house. That is a huge increase in real purchasing power during a deflation. And if we do get that kind of crushing deflation, people will walk away from their houses in magnitudes more than what we've seen already in the 2008 housing crisis. I believe that we'll actually see more significant increases in real purchasing power in the more predictable hyperinflationary case. So can we finally move on from this inflation-deflation debate and just say that in either case, the paper debt paradigm is done? Bonds will not save you as more money is thrown onto the fire to keep the economy going destroying the real inflation-adjusted returns of the bonds. Bonds will either not be paid as nations default, and we have seen the highest-rated bonds are junk in reality. This is not a shift from the equity to the debt markets. It is a shift from paper wealth to real wealth. Nothing will stop this train, and only those that can see it coming will be able to prepare for it.